Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to episode 13 of Spiritual Split Splash. I'm Karen Lynn, and these are hopeful, heartfelt messages that guide to greater well being. And I'm really excited if you're joining me today live, if you're catching this later, welcome to this broadcast. I am going to be joined by Dr. Vicente Ramirez, who is based in Medellin, Colombia. He's a traditionally trained medical doctor. He's been in practice for over 27 years. And what's so unique about his practice is he's actually incorporating and integrating other modalities like energy work and spirituality. So he's really affecting miracles in his clients. He's cured cancer, lupus, depression, and, and many other ailments. And I'm just so excited that he's going to be able to be here with us, to share him with you. I've personally worked with him when I spent some extended time in Medellin many years back. I had the great fortune to meet him and be able to receive his healing. Hi, how are you, doctor? Welcome. Hello. Nice right. to we see you connected. again. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much yes. for being here with us. It's a pleasure to have this opportunity. Just to start, because you have such a rich and deep background, healing and your exposures worldwide. You've affected so many lives, touched lots of hearts, and really brought people to a place of healing where they can then take their journey in the right directions for themselves. Will you just give us some background about how this how this evolved, please, to share with everyone, because your story is, is unique and what you're doing is unique and I'd love to share that part of your of your journey with others. First, I am from Medellin, Colombia in South America and there was this boom of uh, news scientists trying to find out how to treat the problem of people smoking and suffering and realizing that tobacco caused many people uh, to die and suffering. So I grew with the idea that I wanted to treat cancer. Then when I finished high school, I went to medical school and I realized that many of the diseases and problems that people suffer, hypertension, diabetes, lupus, a lot of the problems that scientists encountered were not solved with traditional medicine. So I went to the Amazon after to the Amazon jungle after I finished medical school because we have to do one year of social labor. Everybody was very surprised of my decision because this experience was like an adventure and there was a lot of misbeliefs about the jungle, the experience with the Indians. And why did someone that came from a, from a good school of medicine and my family gave me a lot of opportunities to, why would I to a place where there would be like suffering or, or probably I would put my life in danger. But I was following my soul. It was a decision that also started when I was in primary school, when I drew the, the map of Colombia. And I always wondered what was there in the middle of nowhere. There were no roads. There, there was only green and rivers. And I realized that this experience was changing my life, the way of thinking. Some years before, I went with the multinational peacekeeping force at Sinai Peninsula in Middle East. So I, I, I had time to think, to be by myself, to go inside of me. I realized that for one part of my life, I, I spent in the middle of the desert. And then I was in the most humid place in the world, the Amazon jungle. So why I was going from one end to the other end. And I, and I thought probably I'm looking for something that it's inside of me. I'm looking for myself. After I find that the reason of going to this place was getting in touch with me, then I started to see everything around in a different way. How climate, how, how when it rained in the middle of the jungle, many times it rained for one, two, three days. I started to realize that everything was connected, the birds, 
the ants, the river, the community. So then I had these insights, ideas that I have never had before. So I started to write them down. It was because I had plenty of time. I was not worried with the stress of the city. I had other things to worry, but it was very different from my old way of living. So I, I started to think that the diseases were not, they didn't start from uh, bacteria, fungi, viruses. Of course, those things are there, but we attract them when there's something within us that is out of balance. So we have to go into our soul to put things in order. So then I thought, how do we go into our show? I realized it was like going into the internet because when I was a little kid, we had to go to the library to find out the answers for our homework. But now we just go into Google and find the answers. So how about going into the internet? I thought, okay, we have to be more spiritual. We have to put our mind, our heart, and our words or actions aligned to increase our vibration. Then every person I met and every experience had an answer for what I was starting to experience, to realize, to find out the answers in every person, in every bird, in the sunrise, in the sunset. So it was an awakening, not as people thought that it was an experience with ayahuasca or jahe mm -hmm. or something that I did with a shaman. No, it was a more spiritual within myself. Then when I I went back to it. the capital of the Amazon in, in Colombia is Leticia. I forgot about all those things because then I went in, back into my old way of living. I was young, eager to to get the world in my hands. So I went partying, drinking, having fun. But then I started to feel sadness and and I needed an answer to my to the way how I was feeling about myself. I remember in that time, my ex-girlfriend, she went to Canada and sent some pictures to me about all these beautiful gardens. And when I compared to the jungle, I, I realized that we were in two different moments of our lives and that our relation was breaking apart. So I went deeper into my, I guess it was a depression, but I was not aware of it because I hide my feelings with probably alcohol or just working and not paying attention to what was really happening with myself. And I compare it to the last experience when I was in the Sinai Desert that my father passed away. So I really was very scared. Every time I go out of my house, oh. someone important for me, it will not be there again. So it was like very, I was feeling very low. And then somebody that I, I had a gift in my hands because when I went to the surgery room to operate her brother that had an accident, she had a dream that there was a doctor uh, having a being assisted with um, gu uh, spiritual guides of life. I thought she was crazy with all that story and I, uh, I didn't pay much uh, much attention to what she what she said but she was very persistent but at the end I accepted and she invited me to a meditation. I was very annoyed or very I had a, a lot of ideas, misbeliefs about meditating or about am I going into a, a, a in, into a place with persons that I would not know what there's there's belief. I don't want to get involved in something strange, but there was an energy that always pushed push me in, in that direction. And after during the meditation, I knew that I could help people heal with my hands. And I've been doing this for over 29 years and I'm very grateful with life yeah. because my life is so different from what it was before. Before, I I can say that most of the time I feel peace, love, and joy. And that when people have any disease or any problems in their lives, it's just a message for them to make changes. Yes. To Indeed. start realizing that there's things to there's, be done. And, and I want to just jump in, if I may, on what you said about your gift with the hands-on healing. It's so powerful. When I 
had that session, had a couple sessions with you. It was so profound. I felt like you were, you were like extracting, I want to say it was like shifting energy and it was just pulling. I, I couldn't not um, feel or cry or go back to the exact place where the trauma uh, happened if I wanted to. It was like, it just moved that energy and really set a foundation for me. And I, and I would wish it for every human being, even if you didn't, and I had a lot of emotional issues and traumas and things. And I needed to have that healing experience, I think so that I could understand what's possible. And I, I, I want everyone to have that. And I just wonder, is this going to be, in your opinion, something that might become more mainstream? Can people learn how to do this, helping others? Yes, and we, we have that responsibility to teach people how to heal themselves and how to heal others. If you think about any moment in your life when, when you get hurt, the first thing that you do is you put your hands on that area where there's pain. And that's because we know in our intuition that we have the power to heal. When a mother sees that her child is crying or is suffering, the, th the first thing she, she does is she looks at him and many times she breathes at his face and trying to, to wash away or to move away that situation in his, in his head, in his body, in his aura. So we know that we can make changes with our breath, with our eyes, with our, with our hands, with our words. We can restore people's emotions. So we have to start thinking the right way, mm -hmm. feeling the right way, and acting the right way. We have, to res we have to go back to innocence, pureness, because when we are clean like a screen, images and new ideas will, will come into our mind, and we know we will know what's wrong and what to do in any situation in our lives. So we can confront this or uncertainty, learn how to live and help heal humanity. Okay, so do you teach people now a simple technique or way that they can heal themselves or help themselves heal? Yes, meditation is a very important part because they have not taught us how to think. They when we go to school, they, they teach us how to feed our mind with information. And many times we only repeat what they have said. But we need to use our brains in a new way. We have to create higher levels of consciousness and higher levels of experiences in life. Our living right now, like the pandemic or the COVID. That's part of what we have created because our minds are, are not clear and we're not doing what we came to do. Yeah, so that's... it's very important for families and for scientists and for companies all around the world to start thinking what's the purpose of life okay. and starting with each and every one of us. That's profound. That's profound. When we can take responsibility for the, uh, the co-creation of, of the very things that are upsetting our lives, like they're probably hidden blessings, maybe. <laughs> Karen, you know, that's yeah. one of the most important things about my conferences, my workshops, my, the appointments that I have with yeah. different people from all over the world, is that we have to learn in this moment about yes. what's happening right now. For example, we have to be patient. Yes. We have to have tolerance. Mm -hmm. We have to have perseverance. We think, we think that everything, we are in, a, in an era where everything is automatic. So we want our food to be in, in five seconds. So we just put it in the microwave. We go in the car to the drive-thru and I want my food right, right away because I don't have time and I'm rushing to go to work. And, and we have to build tolerance, acceptance, in order to make the changes. If, if what just happened during this interview, if, if we go just desperate, if we just get uh, pissed off, or we just see that probably 
that's someone else's problem. It's my wife's problem that she's always by my side trying to help me, or that is uh, the internet problem, or the company that that uh, we pay <laughs> to have the all this working out. So it's always a, we are uh, we're always going to have to uh, encounter difficulties. Yes, it's it's part of life. It's there's when, when there's an action, there's a reaction. Yes. It's, but when you're when you are wise, you just end mm -hmm. use your intelligence and and ask for if you believe in God or mm, the energy around the universe to give you wisdom. It's very important to look for wisdom. It's like a kite. When the mm -hmm. kite uh, gets hit by the wind, if you use the right position, the kite is always going to go higher. But if you're not in the correct position, the same wind will just destroy your kite or yeah. not do, you won't have fun. fun. So you have to realize in every situation, in any moment in your life, what's the meaning of it. And then you meditate. Amazing, it, it requires some contemplation. So it definitely requires kind of like a conversation with the universe. Yes. Like, oh, you're here. That's here. This is happening. Oh, why is this? Let me reflect with it. And, and, not tr and when you, if you want to find the answers, you, you just can't think rationally. Yeah. <laughs> because logic, logic will give you part of the answers. But life yeah. doesn't speak only in a rational language. Correct. Life speaks you in many different ways. That's right. Sounds, yep. feelings, yep. flowers, paintings. Yep. So you have to work on both hemispheres yeah. to, in order to find the meaning of that experience. But yes. we're always used to thinking and trying to find the answers in a rational way. Yes, true. And we've overdone that in our society for sure. Please explain what a miracle is. When, when do miracles happen? Please tell me. How do miracles happen? All the time. Life is a miracle. Okay. And, and since life is a miracle, uh, it's made of li little miracles. Okay. Yes. But when you are asleep, and that doesn't mean with your eyes closed, that means that you are not conscious about life. You don't think that okay. miracles exist and but they will happen to everybody else except you. So ah. when you start <laughs> okay. create miracles, because you are your own master of yes. life. Yes. And you have to, you have to um, believe in yourself yes. and believe in others and believe in nature and believe yeah. in everything that is in perfect order but since we've created a chaos we are always giving a uh, power to the negative things so it will be very difficult for anybody that is always giving strength to the negative things to create their own miracles so uh. when you realize who you are who we are and accept that there's a big possibility for the miracles to exi exist, then you will start creating small miracles and, and then you will, be, you will practice every day for bigger miracles and then you will realize that your whole life is full of miracles. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. What a process. And that's probably where the enjoyment like, of life comes in too, because you just appreciate and be grateful of those too. Being grateful is very important, everything. Not, not only about good things. Yeah. Many times <laughs> the, we need bad things to, to be grateful for the good things. Yeah. So be grateful about everything and being grateful in advance. When we, when we say thank you, before receiving what we see, that's the perfect way to attract what you need. It's, when you, it's like when you go to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You ask the, somebody that is going to attend you and, you, and you make your order. The person just turns back and goes to the kitchen mm -hmm. and you say, thank you very much. 
and that's only a person but you are you are giving your thanks in advance because you are sure that it's going to come back with what you needed yeah so if you act that way with a person why can't you do it with the universe or with god that has more intelligence more power and mm -hmm. more wisdom so if you do that that's a perfect way to attract and have more faith or more mm -hmm. confidence of what you is is coming to you another okay. thing that's very important and i know you've spoken about this is imagination yes uh, i don't know why we don't know or many people don't know that everything that we have created a cell phone a watch uh, oil everything <laughs> <laughs> a, ca a candle ha goes through a process and that process is imagination somebody yeah. imagine it before we create it so we have to we have to practice imagination and we have to quiet down our mind our thoughts and start creating new experiences new ideas so it's very important and for imagination to work you have to uh, feel it being yeah. sensitive is very important it's like yeah. when you tell when you tell someone i want i want to take you to disney world mm -hmm. and if he's if he's a, a small kid because they're innocent he will start jumping because he wants to see mickey mouse for example yeah. but he's not there yet but he's feeling all that emotion yes emotion is energy in motion yeah so when you move your energy and you imagine you start creating then the next step is your word you know the word is a verb verb mm -hmm. is action so we have to be very careful of our words because we cannot be misusing our words we have to be truthful yeah. sincere honest yeah. we, and it's not a, re a a religious idea it's a spiritual idea about okay. about truth about life yes yeah in the fact they even say like uh the first the words that created the universe were let there be light you know they were spoken so you know, they were casted so when things go wrong you settle down you breathe and then you start realizing or you start remembering when did you created this moment when did you said something wrong or thought something mm -hmm. in the different direction because yeah what you're living in this something that you've created before so if you want to create a better future you have to be sure of so hi are we better now um i want to thank you all for your okay. patience you don't have to feel bad about it oh well we we have you have to feel thankful for everything that we are learning mm -hmm. and the opportunity that we are having to share this experience with you Yes. And with all you. the people uh, in the United States and probably in other places in the world. Yes. We have a worldwide uh, audience. It's my hospitality it, heart. I always want to create the most uh smooth sailing inviting space. So <laughs> thank you for coming back on all of you. People want to to feel better, to heal themselves from cancer, from pain, but they cannot accept reality. They okay. cannot accept that life is is real is this moment yeah. so if if we get annoyed if we get desperate if we just cannot accept that we're working on it, it many years ago just to communicate with someone in any part of the world the only way they could do it was handwriting a letter yeah. and it and it took months to go back and forth and and many people got married and many people they create a business just by writing they people studied on the not in the in, on the internet they studied mailing uh, letters oh, yeah. so w we have to be thankful for those people that created new technologies yeah. and it's part of evolution so yeah. it's not about reading a book or seeing a movie or doing a workshop of course those things are important and 
we have to be open-minded, but that's not going to make us spiritual. Okay. It's going to give okay. us information, yeah. but if we, do, if we don't practice, and the best place to practice is in real life. That's right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you need served up exactly the way you need to get it. Yes. In many moments in my life, when I went with my wife to a restaurant, and I asked for anything in the menu, mm -hmm. like eight out of 10, after five or 10 minutes, the waitress comes back and he says, I'm sorry. <laughs> mm. And I know, I know what you're going to say because it happened so many times. I'm sorry, we don't have that special dish in the menu. And I was not asking for something special. Everybody had their order, but when I made mine, what I received back was, we don't have it. We don't have it. And I got so angry. I said, why don't you tell me at the beginning for me to make a decision <laughs> or this moment? is? <laughs> I, 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 I drove my car uh, many miles away from the restaurant just to come here to have this dish. Yeah. And or, or any type of situation, every place I came in, we don't have the shirt in your size. We don't have, wow. and then I realized that I was attracting that experience oh, because I needed, wow. I needed to work on humbleness, patience, acceptance, and all those things. So it's, you have to be spiritual in every moment of your life. And spirituality is, is our body is spiritual. Our yes. life is spiritual. Mm -hmm. We think that spirituality is when we die, when we pass away, sure. when we go to the Tibet, right. or when we, or we go, if we go to an ashram, right. or we go to a, a retreat and mm -hmm. do yoga for mm -hmm. three days, or sure. whatever, or to church, yep. or all of the above. No. Look, look our body. Mm -hmm. We have seven chakras, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and if you count the, the holes mm -hmm. in, your, in yeah. your skull, yeah. one, two, Seven. Three, four, yeah. five, six, and seven. Yeah. And seven days of the week. If you watch your the last bone, it's triangular in the in the base oh, of I your that. spine. Okay. Is that is the sacrum? Yeah. Sacrum, sacro in Spanish. It, yeah. Sacrum means sacred. Yes. And all the nerves and the muscles that come from that part of your body and connects your legs and your, your feet to the ground. Yes, yes. So every step in this earth, in this place, should be sacred. Yes. It means that you have to be conscious that everything that we do, where we go, that place would be sacred if your thoughts, mm -hmm. if your heart is open to serve and to give the yes. best up from you. And another idea I want to share mm -hmm. is that we don't have to accept getting healthy during all our lives. That's very important. It is, yeah. No, Illness, sadness, aggressiveness, and everything that we see right now in the world yeah. is not part of who we really are. So we have to take away those negative ideas about ourselves. If you see, for example, furniture, mm -hmm. the old way good uh, carpenters did a chair. Okay. That chair will stand the pass of time. Yes. You could find a good chair for 100 years. Yeah. And if a carpenter can do a good chair, God or who created us wow. will not do a body that will stand in good conditions. Yeah for 100, 150 years. Yeah, why, good would, point. why should we have leukemia, mm -hmm. leukemia, or why should we end up with Alzheimer or Parkinson? Thanks, or, two or, things. You have a question, and I just want to get to that. Yes. And I have a second thing about okay. what you're saying, but I just want to get to this question because I don't know if Jaylene is still here from Moonlight Wisdom Tarot. She says, I'd really like to ask you a question about two weeks ago, she got severe food poisoning, for like four hours, 
um, from eating raw oysters. And then she says, now I thought, would it be okay to eat raw fish again? Because she had the food poisoning again. That's a very good question. Like all questions are good, but it's very, we always think of what we did just before to get ill. Like I ate raw fish, so should I eat raw food, raw, raw fish again? And there's much more before that experience. When we eat something, food is not only what we need to be healthy and nurtured. Food is also, there's a parallel between food and love. When you see a mother feeding her baby, mm -hmm. she's giving all her love and her milk to, to grow him up and have him healthy. And he needs not only milk, but he needs to feel himself protected and cared for. Yeah, yes. Uh, many times when we speak about, uh, um, we are going to celebrate our anniversary. So I want, you, I want to invite you to, to a good dinner or I prepared mm -hmm. your special dish for you. Mm -hmm. So you express your love with many times with food. Oh, I'm feeling happy and I want uh, to give you a chocolate right <laughs> or let's let's have an ice cream yeah and let's have a happy moment so she has to realize not only the raw fish make her throw up and feel sick she needs to have a colon cleanse because uh -huh. many times there's a lot of experience from her past that she has to let them go. And when, you have, and when you have diarrhea, for example, you, you don't only have amoebas or that you have to clean very well because they have amoebas, but also you have to realize that all the difficult experiencing, experiences in your lives, like bad news, yeah. when you break up with your girlfriend, boyfriend, yeah. husband, or you have an argument, all that energy goes into your solar plexus. It's like a net that traps a negative energy before it goes into your endocrine system. Wow. And your nervous system. So she, doesn't, she has to realize what she's cleaning. If you see oriental medicine before every treatment, the best thing that you should do is to clean your colon and your bloodstream with plants that will, will change the acidity or the pH of your bloodstream. Fascinating. And later we, we will talk about how fasting, yeah. no, but I mean the acidity and the basic yeah. of your, many times it's fasting, but many times it's just cleaning your colon with different type of therapies. Another day we yeah. would speak about how our, our emotions affect our bloodstream, wow. our liver, our heart, and our mind. Yeah. Everything is connected. Absolutely. So I will tell the person that asked the question. Mm -hmm. I remember one of my patients, she her, her, uh, had a car accident. Yeah. And he went into coma for two months. She stood by his side day and night for two months praying and doing caring for him like a mother does. After two months, he started to react. And then he had to learn how to walk and do all the things again. And after one year, he was back to school happily. Then her husband told her, let's go to an island in the Caribbean in, from Colombia. They went like for a second honeymoon to have all that pain and stress wash away with the ocean, with the, with the sun, with the, to start all over again. If you realize life starts in this planet in the ocean, why she wanted and she needed to go back to that place. When she was there, they offered her oysters and all those fish they prepare in the beach. And many times they don't wash very well mm -hmm. or they not going to uh, throw away the fish because 
many many of these people are poor. Yes. And they they need that money, so they will sell the fish the next day yeah. in the mo at the beach. Mm -hmm. And she ate that raw or rotten fish. She had an in a diarrhea or an yeah. intoxication. Yeah. And what was really happening, she was washing away all the pain, the wow. struggle, the stress for one year before. Amazing. So many times we think, I'm allergic. He says, so they go to the allergy doctor and they do all these tests and they say, allergic to cat to dogs, to, to horses, yeah. hair, and you cannot get involved with milk, with doctors will tell you, don't eat this, don't do this, yeah. don't, don't have fun. Yeah. <laughs> True. So when you, it's not only what we get into our mouth or what we eat, it's important to have a good nutrition and do the right stuff, but it's more important to yes. check inside what's not Oh, Amen. Yeah, well Clean. said. No, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I just want to bring attention to your socials. So if anyone on this broadcast or watching it at a later time would like to find you, you have a website, you have YouTube, but everyone can find you and all those places. Yeah, I just want to circle back to what you were saying because we were talking, if you're just joining now and you're new to this, we were talking about how um, our bodies are able to, or built for long haul living and we can heal our own ourselves. And you were saying there's no reason why we should uh, have, you know, Alzheimer's or these other diseases if we can um, stay in a healthy vibration. But I want to bring up the point of, of environmental toxins because I think increasingly with the way we treat the planet, the way our outside surroundings are, it's almost impossible to avoid toxicity that previous generations they didn't have to deal with. And as we accumulate more and more, even the body being strong, how can it fight against bombardment of heavy metals, chemicals, just so many things? Yes. It's many times we think of in our planet, like if we are separated from what happens to the sun, to the water, to the mountains, and we are always connected. Yeah. We're not separated really. So, of course, we are destroying the water, we're destroying the environment, and we are killing ourselves. Yeah. It's that simple. But when you, when you eat, I always put my on top of the food. For some, it's like a praying, but it's not only praying. Yeah. It's letting my hands irradiate the food and cleaning from not only the toxins, inside uh, the fish or whatever I'm eating, yeah. but also the, the bad energy that could be on, on that food because you never know if the person that was cooking, if she was angry, yeah. sad, absolutely, with all these problems of life. So yeah. every time you, you start thinking that we should really be involved with all the actions that will help our environment. Yeah. And every, as I told you before, when you clean every morning, I drink water uh -huh. with lemon and bicarbonato. Oh, baking soda. And you can do it every morning. And you start cleaning your bloodstream. It's going to get cleaner every day. And then when I breathe the oxygen in the first moment when the sun rises, Mm -hmm. Then you start you start creating a spiritual or a healthy way of living. When you make all these small changes in your lifestyle, then you will have stronger energy to not get sick from radiation for this and for that other okay, good. Uh, metals or everything that is around us. Thank you. That's, that's okay. very helpful. Oh, someone's asking here, how much baking soda? So would you just go over that recipe for that water? Small teaspoon of uh, soda, baking okay. soda, one lemon. One, one full lemon? One full lemon, okay. uh, the juice, and that you Squeeze. get out of the lemon, squeezed yeah. in that moment. Okay. And uh, hot water, one cup of okay. hot water. And always your purpose your intention of what you want to clean. Because 
Another day, have you read about how Masaru Emoto in yes, Japan, he, he took the pictures of water crystals? Yes, absolutely. So your intention mm -hmm. of what you want to get out of that uh, recipe mm -hmm. is very important for everything that you... Yes, yes. And I just want to clarify, if those of you watching have said, test studied intention setting onto water and... They've done it with plants too, but water particularly, where they've projected very positive images of happiness and love and good vibrations, and then very negative vibrations like hate, anger, through phrases. And they looked at the water under, you know, powerful microscopes, and you could actually see the molecule was beautiful and symmetrical with the good intention and incomplete and incoherent and not symmetrical with the negative vibrations. And not only, yes, they also did it with music. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, and he, it was very, very amazing to see when, when they put uh, like Mozart music or mm -hmm. when they put uh, heavy metal yeah. music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two the, the difference yeah. is, yeah. Or, and, and they put Heartbreak Hotel from Elvis Presley. Oh, wow. And, okay. and the crystal broke. Wow. Because the letter of, yes. You oh, saw, wow. you see a, a, an image of broken in two pieces. So what the words, the, the, the tones, they, they, we create with vibration, with vibration, reality. In incredible. So we okay. have to be that much careful. And also, one last thing. When you put the hand over the water then, is, is your intention going yes. through the hand? Yes. Okay. Your, you, okay. So you your actually cover the, you your cover the energy. Hand. Okay. Okay. Huh? That's helpful. Well, thank you so much. Uh, so great. Amazing things to reflect and think about. So thank okay. you so, so much. I'm very, very thankful. Yeah, no, we are as well. And I, and I wanted to ask before, because I ask this of everybody who's here with me on uh, Spiritual Split Splash, before we go, just to share um, a book or resource, um, as well as your own book, because I'd like you to add that too, but something that you think would be helpful for everybody. Okay. I, I do... Cinema therapy. Okay. And that's how, yeah. how I, I, when I see a movie, I, I, I was thinking, how do I get more men involved with all these topics? Because even though it's starting to change, mm -hmm. most of men, yeah. we are very rational. So right. we don't, we think that all these topics are, are not serious or uh, scientific. Sure. So, so I thought, how do I get these people involved? So I, I realized that we all love, or most of us love movies. So when I see a movie, I, I want to explain how we create our experiences like with the invisible thread mm. that comes from our heart and gets enlightened with our thoughts. Yes. And we can create a very beautiful painting or mm -hmm. whatever that is our life so one movie it's all good movie it's mm -hmm. my life with michael keaton okay. my life oh i haven't seen that oh okay it's my life okay my life with michael keaton it's about he gets diagnosed with cancer okay and his wife is pregnant oh like wow four months or something yeah. And the doctors tell him that he only has about two months left and he's not going to be able to see his son. Oh. So he starts uh, recording with a video camera his life because he wants to have uh, something to share with his son. I'm not going to tell you everything, but she asks him to visit a healer ah. like me. <laughs> so he does it but he doesn't really he he goes there but he's he says you're nuts why you're you're asking me to come to this place i really i'm not crazy and i really don't believe that these people are serious but this healer tells him that, that he has to get rid of all the anger and hate that it's inside his body yes and then you have to see okay. what happens. It's a very beautiful. Movie well, someone here to says, Liv El Villa Mesa is, it says, it's life changing. She says, this movie's amazing. She says, it's on YouTube, so everyone can find it. Yes. That's so exciting. 
Cool. And my book, okay, my book, you can get it in Ama at Amazon. Okay. It's Nuevamente. That's mm -hmm. like a new mind. Yeah. Nuevamente, una reflexión para cada día. Like, a, new, a new reflection yes, for every day. But Vicente Ramirez Gonzalez. And you can get it. It's like small re thoughts or reflections. And you can read it very easily because you just, when you're, When you're drinking a good yeah. Colombian coffee. Yeah. <laughs> is it in Spanish? Yes. Is it, is it yes. in Spanish? Okay. So thank you so, so much. And thank you for you guys if you're joining. I really appreciate all the support um, for being here on these spiritual split splash broadcasts. And we hope we see you again soon. And I, I definitely would love to have you back, Doctor, to talk in more detail about so many topics. We'll do that in the future. Okay, whenever you want to, Karen. And thank you for everybody that had the patience. And uh, I hope to see you soon again. Okay, thank you. Mwah. Okay. You guys have a beautiful weekend. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.